Hello, everybody. Ella J here on behalf of WrestleZone. And today I'm joined by half goddess, half hell, Kelsey Reagan. How are you doing today? Great. Got my Coke ready to go. Coke is the way to go. Coca-Cola. I'm a Coca-Cola girl know. myself. <laughs> no, you know. Yeah. Coke for me personally, I prefer Coca-Cola. Do you prefer? I'm curious. I, I'm a big like soda drinker. Is Coca-Cola your go to? It is. I over like uh, Mountain Dew, all that. I love Coke. It's just it's my favorite. And I know it's, not, it's bad for you and all that. But like, what's not bad for you? That is very, very true. You know, I'm I'm a big energy drink. It's it's very bad for you too, and soda drinker. So you know, it just it is what it is. You know, um. But before we get into like all of this wrestling and non wrestling stuff, I know you recently announced that you were taking some time off from wrestling, hence why you're doing more of these lovely interviews. So I'm glad to catch up with you. You are still open to serving as a manager during this time. So again, if you're comfortable with it, can you give us a little bit more insight into what led to this decision and your maybe your plans while you're away from the in-ring action? Oh gosh. Um, so I didn't want to take a break. Um, Oh God, I'm, I'm going to try not to cry during this because I'm like, I really don't want to step away at all. But um, I, my neck is giving me some issues. I had, um, I took a power bomb a few months ago that um, it, I, I guess it was a whiplash injury. I don't know. They, the x-rays were fine. I, nothing was broken, but you can't really see like, unless you get an MRI or something, yeah. I guess you can't really see the image. Uh, but I kept wrestling on it because, you know, it, that's just how I am. <laughs> um and uh, it's just not getting any better it's just getting worse and worse and so I'm like I I've been forced to take a little bit of a break and try to heal it so I'm I'm taking three months off I'm hoping to be back mid-October um but it's not something that I wanted to do at all I'm very upset about it yeah so I know during this time you're still open to doing managerial work you're doing more podcasts do you besides rehabbing your injury do you have any other plans of what you're going to do now that you're kind of taking a step back from wrestling um no and I feel like I've made wrestling like my entire life and it's it's really hard when I can't do it anymore and it's like what am I supposed to do with my life like wrestling was my life um so, I mean, I'm just going to be in the gym, uh, which I, I mean, I was before, but in the gym, um, trying to make money, probably going to be working a lot more than um, I normally would because, you know, I I'm, I don't have that income from wrestling coming in. So, yeah, got to drive. But I'm hoping that I can get some manager work. Um, I have talked to a few people about it um, that are interested but, you know, we'll we'll see how it goes. Nothing in permanent right now. Yeah, you know, it's definitely um, it's definitely like a, a harsh reality, you know, like life just sometimes hits you even just in general. And you have this idea you're so reliant and focused on one thing, but then not that it's coming to like a stop, you know, just kind of a little break. I feel like it gives you time, though, to like kind of scan over everything and regather your footing and also take care of yourself at the same time, you know, align your goals for what you want to do in and outside of the ring. And so I know it probably sucks right now, but I feel like this time is definitely very valuable uh, for you to kind of assess the future and all of that. I would have to imagine. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's good to take a break too, because I, I was getting so burnt out from working so much and um, you know, it, it's not good to make one single thing your entire life. It's, but that's kind of how I've always been. So, you know, yeah, I'm trying to come. I need a hobby or something. <laughs> yeah. You know, and well, you, you've got time now, you know, um, I know at least from gathering from my past chats with you and your social media, you seem to be drawn to the horror genre of like film and that whole realm, I would think. Yes. So I'm guessing too, you're a fan of as above, so below, because that is the quote literally on your Instagram. What exactly draws you to the horror realm in general? And then of course the as above, so below film. Oh my gosh. Um, well, horror, I feel like I came out the womb, like being obsessed with horror. Um, I know, um, I mean, I don't really remember back my like two and three, but my mom said that I was obsessed with horror movies and I would watch them with my dad. 
and she was not a fan of it because I was way too young to be watching yeah. horror movies. Um, but I'm sorry, my cat's gonna let's. Oh, I that. love cat cameos. I'm here for it, Kelsey. I'm here for <laughs> it. They're camera hogs. Um, but yeah, I would watch them with my dad, and um, I I just was obsessed. I don't know what it, I just it caught my eye. I loved it, and I was not scared of them either. Um, it was just something that I was like, this is so interesting to me. I loved it. I did start getting scared though as I got older. And I kind of liked that, that I got scared by it. So, yeah. And as far as As Above So Below, um, that's, oh my gosh, that's one of my favorite movies. And um, I don't know, it's just, it's something about it. I think I'm super claustrophobic. And I have like, I'm sorry, all that cave diving. And, oh no, I can't do it. So I think that... Um, that stress and anxiety from watching it and having that claustrophobia like that that movie I love that movie so much and it has so many like awesome quotes as well I know you know I'm curious you probably can't recall the first one you ever saw because you were like two or three but what other horror films do you like particularly enjoy like of all time oh my gosh of all time so I actually just saw Hellraiser a couple years ago. And so now I'm obsessed with Hellraiser. Like that's my new, that's my, that's my new horror thing. I haven't seen it. Okay. Me, I don't know if it's like a cult, cause I know there's cult classics, but can you mm -hmm. kind of give a little bit of an overview of what it's about? Hellraiser? Oh, it's, um, okay. So damn, why, why am I, um, what are the demons? They're not demons. What are they called? um oh Spirits? my gosh no it's the uh, it's what pinhead is um gosh i don't know why it's just it's blinking me now um but so yeah they're um i like to call them angels like the, so they say in the films like uh some call us angels and some call us demons um but they're just kind of like the guardian of the spiritual world i mm -hmm. guess which is what angels are biblically yeah. so i'm like hmm they're angels but they're not exactly like good they're and actually kind of raisers okay yeah okay i i find myself i also love the horror but it's also like i find myself going like this but it's also like i can't turn it off it's like i love it too it's like it's like an, an exciting enthralling <laughs> feeling of being scared with certain things um, I don't know what it is about it though. I'm curious. You said um you sometimes get scared. Is there certain things that scare you more than others about horror movies? Like there's there's a lot of tropes in them. Is there certain things that scare you more? Um uh, as you were talking, I didn't want to cut you off, but I remembered they're called Cinnabites. Okay. They're called Cinnabites. I'm like, what? Oh gosh, ADD. Um there's so something <sighs> I think I'm more scared of, like, the paranormal than, like, slasher films. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of weird because slasher films are, like, more realistic than paranormal, kind of. But I feel like it's easier, for, like, if I was, if, if I could fight back, it's easier for me to fight something that's yeah. there versus, like, paranormal. How am I going to fight a ghost? Yeah. Like, throw a punch, you're just going to go straight through. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, yeah, like, paranormal activity um have you seen paranormal activity yes so when that first came out oh it scared the ever-living shit out of me sorry i don't know if i can test yeah no you're good it was terrifying and now i watch them and i'm like this is so cheesy <laughs> i love like love paranormal movies because i'm super into that but i'm all i know i get scared by them but it's just so interesting to me like i love the spirit world and talking about ghosts i think honestly i'm more scared though by slasher films because it is so realistic that it like could at, not that paranormal that's a kind of a blurring thing that paranormal could happen in real life or not but for me i think i'm more scared of slasher stuff because that is more realistic so i i, I don't know but i i love both and you were talking about as, um as above so below has a lot of quotes i'm curious to know more about the context behind or the meaning of your quote in your instagram bio that reads and they should be made to crawl on their bellies into the kingdom of darkness so what is the kind of context or meaning surrounding that so um, in the movie, um, <clears throat> and it's also in mythology, apparently, that is transcribed over the gates of hell. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then so, cause they're like cave diving, they have to like crawl through the little tunnel. Um, and to me, it kind of equates with snakes because snakes crawl on their, yes. their belly. So yeah. And also, um, you know, Satan and serpent, they go hand in hand, hell and snake something. And it, it kind of ties in with your, you know, your Medusa kind of uh mm-hmm. inspired look and your head I love your head pieces always have but you know uh I'm interested too I know a few of your horror or your a few of your tattoos seem to be horror inspired specifically the Ouija board blanket that's centered just under your sternum can you kind of I love cats <laughs> they they <laughs> always they my cats do the same thing they always want you know the spot you know they're chilling but then once you turn the camera on they're just camera hogs they really I- are it's like they know <laughs> you're filming and they're like I want to I want to be filmed so sorry it's probably going to happen again it's all good how many cats do you have is is it just the one or do you have multiple I have two um that you've seen both of them already mm-hmm. of course um <laughs> I have a black one and then I have a tabby cute 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 you know uh black cats are obviously horror too but like i was saying specifically your ouija board blanket that's centered under your sternum can you kind of talk about the tattoo and the elements included inside of the designing i know there's an eyeball there's a couple of moons in it can you just tell us more about this um it was a tattoo that i wanted for years and um i I, I, there's something about like sternum tattoos and stomach tattoos I think that they're so beautiful. And so I knew that that's what I wanted. I knew that that's where I wanted it. Um, But it was just finding the artist. um, Because I, I, when I wanted that, I didn't have an artist at the time. I was kind of like moving around. Um, But yeah, I I finally found the guy that um, would do it. And he's over in Tampa. And I would give his information, but he doesn't tattoo new clients. He um, only, like, he's retired, so he just does, like, yeah. But, yeah, um, I found kind of something similar on the internet, and I was like, I love the look of this, how simple it is. Um, And, you know, he, I knew I wanted all grayscale because my guy specializes in grayscale. Um, So, yeah, and um, maybe probably when I get some extra money, which is probably going to be never, but one day, um, I'd like to add on to it. So maybe something coming, you know, out from underneath. Let's see. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, you can't see it because the camera. No. But yeah, I think maybe like coming out like leaves or branches or something coming out. So oh yeah, to kind of uh frame the under boob. I think yeah. that would I think that would look really pretty, especially too with like your gear too and stuff like that. I, you know, I we'll talk about your family background with the Salem witch trials in a second, but oh can gosh. you, can you talk <laughs> about um going back to your Ouija board tattoo? Have you played around with the Ouija board before? Is that kind of what it inspired or drew you to that? So for me, it was just my love for the paranormal and horror. Yeah. Like was, I, I like the Ouija planchet because it tied it all together you know, honestly, um, have I played with it when I was little? Yes. No, I'm making my parents look so bad. Like, (laughs) um, but yeah, I played with my cousins when we were, I was probably like six or seven. Um, nothing, I don't have any crazy story. It was just, you know, a creepy vibe in general because we were like out in the woods. Oh my gosh. I should stop talking because I'm going to get my parents like canceled. (laughs) Well, well, I, I'm, I'm just saying it's kind of in your DNA a, a little bit. Like I just mentioned, your ancestors were actually part of the Salem witch trials, and ironically, they were the ones in favor of burning the witches. And, and here you are, kind of into the witchy stuff. We'll get to that in a second. But what, what, what else do you know about your ancestors and kind of their involvement in the Salem witch trials? I really don't know. Um, a lot but I do know um, that's one thing that's been passed down and then I had like a um, a bunch of papers that someone sent on our ancestors and it was so much of it all like skimming through it Um, but I think his name was Robert Ring um, because that's my 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 uh, grandpa's last name is Ring I have a tattoo on my uh, foot also but um, 
he apparently accused someone of being a witch and he was part of the witch trials and I, he was not a very good guy. It was, yeah. That was, that's just the gist of it. He was a piece of shit person. <laughs> but that's my great, 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 great grandfather or something. So yeah. I'm not like, oh, that he would not be happy with me for sure. No, just- like it, it, it kind of is, it kind of is ironic because now you're kind of into the, the witchy kind of vibe going on there and paranormal and stuff like that. Can you tell us more about the extent of your interest as it revolves to kind of paranormal and i don't know if you would call it some people call it witchcraft some people call it magic can you kind of tell us more about your interest and extent in involvement in that um well i don't want to come off and say like i'm that i'm a witch because i'm not i don't practice yeah um, craft and i'm not I, I wouldn't say i'm a wiccan or anything like that um but i do the I've always been obsessed with witches, like witches, vampires, anything yeah. horror ever since I was a kid. I know um, when The Craft came out, like 96 or something, 95, 96, I think maybe, I was obsessed with The Craft. Like that, uh, yeah, I, I just, I've always been interested in witches. Now for me, um, I'm not, I don't know what I necessarily believe in, like if spells are real and yeah. all that stuff, but you know, the aesthetic is fun. Yeah, I, I'm curious. I know a lot of people in that. I don't know if you're into crystals at all. Is that kind of something you vibe with? Or is it what what else do you vibe with then besides the creatures themselves? I do. I have some crystals. Um, and I, I think they probably work to an extent. Um, but I'm I'm not entirely I'm not a huge crystal fan. Like, I don't carry them around yeah. with me where I do have a rose quartz that I keep underneath my bed um at night and then I have my obsidian and I keep by my door so like to an extent I use keep them, out the negative like, energy yeah yeah correct. Mm-hmm. yeah but I'm not a crazy crystal lady <laughs> no offense if you are just not me no not that. and that's kind of the the beauty of it there isn't like one uniform like you have to believe it's kind of like the ast- astrology kind of ties into it too as well some people believe this some people believe more or less you know it's not just like one standard thing there's kind of a spectrum to it but you mentioned too wanting to add more on to your uh ouija board kind of tattoo do you have any uh specific plans for your next tattoo i know the last time i talked to you you wanted to get finally a medusa tattoo done i'm curious has, has, have you gotten that yet or what's what's the update no okay no i actually um i sent my tattoo artist the what i wanted um and it was kind of like this little cherub uh angel but she had snakes for hair so i'm like i i love combining the two and i wanted it here to start off my sleeve and he was like yeah cool i got you uh give me a couple uh weeks and then i never heard back from him and i was like well i'm not gonna push it so um and now i don't have the money anymore because you, you gotta catch me when i have the extra money because i if not i'm gonna spend it <laughs> you know that's fair kind of same same too as well but you know i i feel like you have so are you planning to do like both arms of sleeves then it, it seems like oh, i would cool. love to i think that just the look of you know full sleeves are so beautiful yeah. but it costs a lot a lot of money and all my extra money goes towards wrestling and yeah. gear and merch i have new merch by the way you guys should buy buy some shirts Plug it, pl- plug it, sister. <laughs> yeah, I love my new shirt. It's beautiful. Have you seen the the new the Jesus, the Jesus one? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw that the red and the face. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. You, I, I personally, I have one of your shirts. It's the green and black and white one. I love <laughs> that one. Um, I also love your aesthetic because I kind of I'm with the the darker kind of vibe with it. So I'm a big fan of that. Tell us, I mean, for those who don't know, tell us more about your new shirt design. Um, well, I I'm hoping I'm not offending. Well, I don't really give a shit to be honest. <laughs> um, it is Jesus, but instead of a crown of thorns, he has a crown of snakes. Yes. Um, and I don't know, it just, it popped in my head one day and I was like, I love the look of like that portrait of Jesus with the crown of thorns and he's crying. Yeah. 
Uh, but I'm like, let's we get a crown of snakes. So, you know, Mark DeGrucci, he does my um, graphic design. He's done all of them. Well, he didn't do the the green and the black one, but anyway. Um, and he he always knows exactly what I want. He put the um, it's a Bible verse, and it says, um, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And I didn't tell him to put that on there. Um, I just told him I said I want the the Jesus with the snakes. And then um, I, I'm laying in bed one night and I'm like, I feel like there should be some like writing on it. Because my best ideas come when I'm half asleep. I think right? that's everybody. Same. They really do. So I'm like, I, I need to tell him to add that on. And the next day he sent me the finished graphic and it was already on there. It was like he read my mind. I'm like, how did you know that I wanted that? Like, we're, we're so in sync, so... I, I I love that it it was just meant to be and I think the I think the design is really cool and definitely yeah. fits your aesthetic as well and it's very clear that you primarily enjoy horror but I'm curious do you kind of dabble into comedies dramas or other genres as well that you enjoy or is it mainly horror oh, yeah. okay yeah no I, I love comedy um I love all kinds to be honest now the one thing that I haven't really gotten into and I hate it because everybody's into it but the marvel and dc i'm not into that either kelsey oh thank you <laughs> i'm really people, not uh people ask me like are you into marvel dc do you, do you like comics and i'm like no i wish i could you guys sound like you're like you seem like you're having a good time i just i can't get into it <laughs> i'm i'm not either i i honestly don't think maybe it's just because i haven't seen them but i just don't personally like think i'm really into that you know i'm pretty much into like everything else i like horror thriller comedy drama sci-fi is cool certain fantasies are cool just for me like this the superhero kind of marvel dcu just isn't kind of my thing you know i don't know i don't i don't know why <laughs> yeah i i don't know why either because i mean it kind of and it, wrestling fans love comics and yeah. marvel and like it goes hand in hand but i'm just like i for some reason i've never been able to get into it um star wars though i love star wars love star wars i i think the wrestling fans will forgive you because you love star wars <laughs> <laughs> I have star wars shirts oh my gosh i'm a i'm a huge darth vader nerd i love mm -hmm. darth vader I'm curious, what else are do you um watch like film and TV wise besides Star Wars outside of the horror genre? Oh, I was about to give you an answer, but um, it is kind of not horror, but it's kind of horror. Um, do you have you heard what we do in the shadows? It's on Hulu. No. So it's a comedy, but it's also it's a comedy about vampires. So it's like a it's like The Office but with vampires. Oh, it's hilarious. And it is the dumbest show ever, but it's so funny. So that's, that's my newest obsession. What we do in the shadow. I have Hulu. So I'll need to check that out. Cause it, it's, I, I just want to see how they do it with like vampires, but with, with like, kind of like the office. Interesting. It, interesting. That's the best way. I think it might be from the same um, creators of the office. Maybe. Don't quote me on that but um it's it that's the vibe it gives it's so like it's so dumb it's like they're following them around with a camera yeah. but like no one acknowledges the camera uh, yeah you it's like the it's exactly like the office yeah okay well i'll have to check that out after this i'm i'm in interested to see kind of what it, it looks in uh plays out to be but we were mentioning before i know i know you love your gear and you've said before that you get your ring gear uh from a variety of sources inspiration but when it comes to your your favorite piece of ring gear i feel like everybody has at least one that's you know their favorite can you tell us about the inspiration behind your most favorite ring gear of all um well the person who inspires pretty much most of my ring gear is Liv morgan and I, by the way, I love the little portrait behind you. I've been staring at you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. It's very pop arty. I don't have anything else like it. I love it. It's gorgeous. Um, yeah, she inspires. I, I, I take like her gear, and I'm like, I love the the outline, like the outline of it. I don't know if that's the right word, but then I kind of put like um like a a darker aspect on yeah. it. Yeah. But yeah, I did the best ring gear of all. I. 
I agree. Um, like you're not the first person to say that. I think she just overall has a really strong ring gear game. You know, she mixes up. She never has like, she has similar kind of like you know the the straps and stuff, but it's never like the same color, same design, and all of that. And it just fits her silhouette. And you take it and conform it to you know your whole kind of Medusa darker vibe going on. I, 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 I like that. So, you know, kind of talking about this darker ensemble, though, you recently started tag teaming with Devlin Macabre. You two used to be foes, but now you're tag teaming with the name of Venom and Violence. I know Devlin has kind of had a recent change in character and has begun venturing into the darker side. So can you tell us how you two kind of came together and, and formed this team? Um. Well, I feel like when you've wrestled someone as many times yeah. as we like it's just kind of inevitable it's like we either need to team up because like I'm tired of wrestling you all the time so we need to team up so we don't have to do this anymore like this, this, is, this is over and done with I've beat your ass too many times um but yeah no we uh, <clears throat> uh SWF is when we combined forces and we had a hardcore match that was amazing like I love I love hardcore matches um, and that's, I don't really like to watch my, my matches back a lot, but that is one match that I'm like, I don't, I, I'm, I haven't gotten tired of it. I like watching it over and over. It's just so good. Um, not to brag on myself, but, um, and then after she, she went over, she won, um, and Zeta Steel came out to, um, you know, save me from her because she'd already won. And she the was real being deal, a- yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I turned on Zeta and um, we spit black mist in Zeta's face to, you know, make it in, uh, hurt a little bit more. And uh, then we decided that we were friends. I, I like it too, because again, Devlin was one who hasn't always had the kind of darker aesthetic, but you know, she's dyed her hair. She, she's got the mist going on too. Obviously, we won't get to see you two tag team for a while. Maybe you can maybe you can still manage her though i know you're still open to that so maybe we can still get some venom and and violence in in our veins i just wanted to go there so well actually um it's funny because she just got hurt also so i feel like everybody is injured right now there's like so many people that are out on injury um but she the doctor told her a month um, she may be taking more time off um, if she needs it, but um, she took a move. It was a, a DVD, I think, and then she landed on the back of her neck, and so she's got some neck issues right now too. It it comes with the territory, yeah. you know. But uh, we'll we'll eventually get back together. <laughs> yeah, take care of yourselves first. Neck ish neck injuries are no joke, especially with all the nerve. Yeah, no, definitely. Take care of yourself. That's the first priority is your health. And, you know, kind of taking things in, you recently did have the opportunity to do an appearance alongside wrestling legend Lisa Marie Barron, a.k.a. Victoria, a.k.a. Tara. You said that you learned a lot from her that day, I believe. Um, So can you tell us more about some of the specific things you learned or gathered from her that day? Oh, my gosh. For, uh, first of all, I was worried because... um. You know, you these people that you look up to, you're always worried that they're gonna be a dick. She's and like sweetest, for real. She is so nice and sweet, and she made me feel like welcome. Um, and you know, people, most of the the fans came to see her. Uh, she's way bigger deal than I am. Like, <laughs> so, you know, that's it's understood. Um, but every time she would be like, "Do you guys want to meet Kelsey Reagan? Come over here, meet Kelsey Reagan." So it, she she just she wanted me to you know feel like like I was at home and I was okay and I loved that and um every time uh, someone you know wanted to take a picture she'd be like Kelsey come over here like get in the picture and she's just sweet and um she she taught me a lot about um the signings that because I don't do a whole lot of signings yeah. um I do them a little bit but she's you know she's queen of signings that's she what is. she does. Um, so I, I, I learned, one of the things I learned is that blue Sharpie doesn't fade. So if you sign in blue Sharpie, like it doesn't turn into like an ugly color, apparently black will turn 
like purple or some I don't know so I can't I can't remember the specifics but she was blue sharpie that's why a lot of people um want blue sharpie and then for the cards that have like the laminate you have to like take the baby powder and like do you know what I'm talking about yes never (laughs) I'm like I've never heard of this this is all like brand new information for me so it was all the stuff that uh yeah it was great oh and to be in gear because I did like a lot of all the signings that I've been to with the other girls it's you know we dress like you know nice but like just in regular attire she was full gear like I, I work with Lisa on their podcast she goes om- all, 98% of the time she's in her gear she's in full because because I know her mindset is people are coming to like meet like Tara Victoria you know <laughs> like she's in it you know and she's so right so I was like you know what I'm gonna go to the bathroom I'm gonna change into my gear because now you've inspired me and um gear is very uncomfortable to be in I don't want to be in it but she's right because if I think about it like when I if I'm going to meet um like let's just say that I'm going to meet uh David David Howard Thornton who mm-hmm. is the guy who plays uh, I think that's his name who plays Art the Clown in Terrifier I don't want to meet the actor I want to meet Art the Clown yeah like so like they're coming to meet the character they don't want to meet you they want to meet the character so yeah you know it's things you learn as you go you know two more questions for you kind of talking about learning and and growing you know you're a few years into your career now you know you just got some tips from Lisa how else do you think that you've grown personally and professionally since you started in the wrestling business oh my gosh um, I feel like I'm a completely different person, to be honest with you. I started training in 2017. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and the person that I was then, I, I kind of came in and I had zero clue anything about wrestling. Um, I watched it a little bit, but I really didn't grow up watching wrestling. Um, so, yeah, it's just I had to learn fast everything about it. And I just feel like it's completely changed who I am which is good. It's changed me for the better. I'm yeah. Sure <laughs> yeah. And you know, we were talking about that at the beginning of this, you've got some time off now to kind of reassess and kind of maybe realign your goals in and outside of the ring. Um, but kind of reflecting back so far on your body of work, you mentioned the Devlin and, and that match and everything. What other matches throughout your career do you feel really proud of and why? Oh gosh. Um, I'm sorry, it's Kat. Uh, Sunny Kiss. I recently had a match with Sunny Kiss for uh, Pro Wrestling Magic. And I've never clicked with anyone like I did with Sunny. Um, it was, actually, I was really nervous because um, she left her boots at home. And then so she had to run home and go get them. So we had nothing called at all and um and I'm like oh my god like we're we're like coming up on this card like the show's already started we have nothing called and uh she came in she got her boots and she was like what do you want to do I was like here's my shine here's my comeback and she's like perfect here's the match it was called like that and I'm like this is the easiest <laughs> match yeah. thing that I've done like normally it's like you know go back and forth oh why would you do that let's do that da, 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 da. but it was like perfect got it and then we went out there and she was exactly where she should be in all the like a ring positioning like she's professional you know what I mean and I just I we clicked so well yeah and you know I mean maybe you can be a ma- manager for Sunny you know maybe that that's something that the people can line up you know you've got some time to reassess of course Kelsey before we let you go can you let the listeners know where they can find you and your merch Yes, um, I'm at Kelsey Reagan on all platforms. Um, TikTok, which I don't use very often, um, is, oh my gosh, what is my TikTok? Okay, never mind. We'll go back to, it's on my, it's, it's, on it's my all good. <laughs> um, and uh, my link to my merch is um, healthyreagan.bigcartel.com. And I do have the uh, the Jesus shirts are for pre-order. Um, they are being printed right now, but it takes about two months to print and ship. So they're on the way, but, you know, pre-orders would be nice. 
Elsie, thank you so much for joining with me today. It's been great catching up with you and honestly, really good luck in your recovery. Hopefully, you know, everything and you come back out on the other side healthier than ever. That's most important. So in the meantime, take care of yourself, please. I will try. I'm trying my heart. <laughs> yeah. Kelsey, thank you so much for joining me here today. Thank you.